is a presentation of WGN Sports. Nobody said it was going to be easy, and there were plenty of nervous moments as the Cubs entered the final week needing a win badly. It never hurts to win the first game of a road trip, but last night's victory looked like it might be plenty painful early on in Milwaukee. But in the end, it didn't hurt nearly as much as what happened to the Mets in New York as Montreal surprised New York 5-3. to three. The Cubs are now within sight of their postseason prize. They just have to reach out and grab it. Today, that task falls on Steve Traxel as the Cubs and Brewers battle next on WGN. Yes, indeed, the Cubs fans are out in force once again at County Stadium in Milwaukee. A gorgeous day for baseball as the Cubs and Milwaukee Brewers wrap up the 1998 portion of the schedule against each other today here at County Stadium. Hello again, everybody. Along with Steve Stone, I'm Chip Carey. Welcome to Cubs baseball and how sweet it is, Stoney. The Cubs and Mets now tied with four games left to play. The Mets still have a home field advantage, one game at Shea Stadium. The Cubs have to play all of their games left on the schedule away from the friendly confines of Wrigley Field, but that doesn't seem to bother Jim Riggleman's bunch a bit. Well, the Cubs are under 500 on the road. However, recently, they've played much better on the road. They're hitting better. They're pitching better. And as you can see, the record dictates that they've been a much better baseball team. And if they are going to get the wild card spot, it's going to be right here in Milwaukee and then on to Houston for three. So a very important start. As you would expect, Steve Traxel takes the ball for the Cubs. It's been a while since he's picked up a win. Maybe today will be the day. Steve Traxel has to have command of that fork ball, and he has to have command of the outside corner. It's been a very good year for Steve Traxel. Obviously, he's got to pick it up. And they announced today that if the Cubs do indeed have a one-game playoff with the Mets in New York, Steve Traxel will be the man. So this becomes even a doubly bigger start. Well, he's been a big-time pitcher for the Cubs. Remember opening day at Wrigley Field? He was very tough then. Perhaps he'll be very tough today in this most important of starts for the Cubs. It's a wild-card tie. It's the Cubs and the Brewers. And we'll have more from County Stadium right after this timeout. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. The new Dodge from cars to minivans to trucks. It's about change. The new Dodge. The Discover card, the card that pays you back with a cash back bonus award. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Pepsi, Generation Next. ComEd, the official electric company of the Chicago Cubs. ComEd, what do you do with your power? And by Southwest Airlines, offering low fares and frequent flights. Southwest Airlines, the official airline of the Chicago Cubs. Sometimes it's the smallest decisions that could change your life forever. Sometimes you don't know you have a choice. I know you want me to follow in your footsteps, but I just can't. Until you make one. What are you doing here? This is where I'm going. That is so unbelievable. Freedom comes when you learn to let go. Creation comes when you learn to say no. Do you think that my coming here was a bad idea, too? I Felicity. Premiering Tuesday night at 8 on WGN. With day scheduled down to the minute, no one has time to wait for prescription refills. But with Walgreens' new 24-hour touchstone pre-fill system, your refills are pre-filled. Just dial the number on your prescription bottle, set your pickup time, and keep your day right on schedule. Your prescription will be ready at 6.45. Refills that are ready when you are, only at Walgreens. Dodge Durango can tow up to 7,400 pounds, nearly half a ton more than its nearest competitor. That's two extra dirt bikes, one more great big water toy, or one more baby grand. Hey, my Durango tows more toys. Gonna lose his wimpy toe in blue.
take it. Feel like you're in heaven now. Get a cash back bonus award later. Hallelujah. Discover the feeling. It pays. Ah, big contingent of Cubs fans, young and old, here at County Stadium in Milwaukee. And plenty of smiles on the faces of Cubs fans today. It's a wild card tie with only four games left in the 1998 regular season. And here in Milwaukee, an absolutely delightful day for baseball. A gentle breeze blowing in. I'm guessing the temperature in the upper 60s, low 70s. It's a four-game season for the Cubs and the New York Mets. And today the Cubs will try to knock off Milwaukee for the second straight ball game. Here's the Cubs Pepsi lineup with red hot Lance Johnson a seven game hitting streak atop the Cub order. Then it's Jose Hernandez Mark Grace Sammy Sosa in an 0 for 21 slide. Then Glenn Allen Hill Gary Gaetti Mickey Morandini and the battery of Scott Service and Steve Traxel. The defense for Phil Garner and the Brewers Jenkins Grissom Burnitz left to right Cirillo Valentin Vina and Loretta in the infield and Bobby Hughes behind the plate and Rafael Roque on the mound he's four and two ERA in the low fours this is his ninth start he saw the Cubs in Chicago they hit back to back home runs against him and that day it was Sammy Sosa and Glenn Allen Hill Lance Johnson in the box and we're underway it's a fastball for ball one high that game. September 12th against the Cubs for Mr. Roque. Six innings, nine hits, five runs, as Steve mentioned. Sosa and Hill Homer in that ball game. And a line drive into the right field corner for Lance Johnson. He rounds first. Burnitz digs it out. He's on his way to second. The throw is not in time and gets away. It's a double for Johnson, and that's what the Cubs love to see. A leadoff, two base hit leading off the ball game. Yesterday the Cubs scored in the second inning and today they're bidding to score in the first inning as Lance Johnson outruns the arm of Jeremy Burnitz. He's got a very good arm in right field and he comes up firing. It's going to be a close play at second but fortunately the ball gets away. Lance is in at second base and the Cubs trying to get on the board and Jose Hernandez has a choice here. You can bunt this ball right at Cirillo or try to hit it to the right side where there is a big hole between Loretta and Vina. Jose hitting 258 with 23 homers and 74 driven in. Lance Johnson with a leadoff double down the right field line starts the game off for the Cubs. The pitch he showed bunt and took low ball one. Jerry Davis, our home plate umpire. Terry Tata, Tom Hallion, Wally Bell, the rest of the umpiring crew as Tom Gamboa flashes the options to Jose Hernandez. Rafael Roque is 6-4. Doesn't throw overly hard. He does have a good changeup. And he spent five years in a ball trying to get to the major leagues and trying to get a break. He's gotten that break with the Brewers. One ball no strikes the pitch again the butt attempt and that's a fair ball. Hernandez looked back the ball took a funny spin bounced back into fair play Hughes pounced on it and threw him out at first and Johnson could not advance. That's not a play you want to see. Jose Hernandez only has two sacrifices. Now right here he doesn't know if it's fair or foul and it's a good play by Hughes because he looks back Lance Johnson before he goes to first and so no sacrifice and now it's going to take a base hit. The arms in the outfield pretty good all the way around for the Brewers. Mark Grace the cup hitter who's in an 0 for 8 slide and he looks at a good fastball for strike one. Mark Grace with a career high 17 homers this year he's driven home 89. Lance Johnson doubled to lead off the ball game. He's still at second now with one man out. Grace hits a line drive. It's caught by Vina and out of his glove. It trickles into right field and Grace is aboard. It's ruled a hit. Vina had the play and the ball came out of his glove and now Sammy Sosa bats with runners at the corners. Well, Lance is going to get doubled off if Vina can control this ball. He can't. And then a wise choice by Lance Johnson as he came around the bag. He picked up Tom Gamboa. Gamboa told him to stay right there. You've got Sammy coming up. You got runners at the corners, only one out. And they're going nuts inside and outside the ballpark. How ironic is this? Sammy 0 for 21. 
wearing number 21. Maybe he'll snap his slide here today. He crushed a Roque pitch back in Chicago. You'll remember that on September 12th. Jeff Pentland trying to get Sammy to think a little bit about right field. If you show these guys you're going to hit the ball to right field, eventually they will have to come inside. And that's the ball that Sammy's going to hit out and left. And I think he's got a lot of confidence against Roque. He knows he cannot throw the ball by him inside. The stretch by the lefty, the pitch. Breaking ball, misses high, 1 and 0. Oh, and the crowd boos with every ball out of the zone. And last time Roque faced Sammy, he did walk him twice. Everybody standing at County Stadium. The runners lead now the 1 0 to Sam. Oh, good cut. He fouled it straight back. He's getting pitches to hit. He's just missing by a millimeter or so. Okay, gave up Mark McGuire's 64th home run. And I'm sure he would be absolutely ecstatic to give up Sammy's 64. That would only be fair. <laughs> you don't want to show any favoritism. Well, the Cubs, if they get off to an early lead, Behind Steve Traxel, they should be in very good shape here today. A stretch in the 1 1. Off speed. Strike. Caught inside corner. It's 1 and 2. So Sammy falls behind in the count. Two on, one out. We're in the top of the first. Another huge crowd of over 40,000 expected today in Milwaukee. The runners lead. The 1 2. Off speed, he took it low. The count evens two and two now. Well, the Cubs' job very simple today. You post a W on the board, and then as we're wending our way to Houston, you put a lot of pressure on the New York Mets to keep pet pace. They've got the home game coming up with the Montreal Expos tonight. Carl Pavano against Bobby Jones in that one later at Shea Stadium. The Expos have beaten the Mets seven out of eleven this year. The two-two. Off speed, take it inside. The count now full, three and two. Now Hughes doesn't throw particularly well, and you wonder if they're going to gamble running Mark Grace. Sammy, as you know, does strike out quite a bit. In fact, 167 times this year, so if you do run with Grace, it is a gamble. However, on an infield ground ball, you probably will stay out of the double play. Three balls, two strikes. Johnson at third, Grace at first, with one out. The three two to Sammy. He walked in ball four inside the base is loaded for Glenn Allen Hill. A double a failed sacrifice a single by Grace and now a one out walk loads the bases for Hill and as Steve mentioned earlier he as well has homered off for OK that back in Chicago. Career wise with the bases loaded Glenn Allen Hill has been very productive. And this is a small ballpark in the daytime. 315 down each line, 362 to straightaway left. Gets a little wider, 392 to the power alleys and 402 to straightaway center. But if you pull it here or slice it down the line, you can get it out of here in a hurry. Roque comes set the pitch. Swing and a miss at the fastball. It's nothing in one. Against Cincinnati in Chicago, the Cubs had several opportunities to score and they didn't do it. You've got them loaded here in the first. They need to put at least one on the board here. The pitch is high and away. One ball, one strike. Roque has not found any rhythm at all. Let's see if the Cubs can take advantage of it. This is, however, a pretty good double play combination in Valentin and Vina. Hill, though, with good speed in the box. One ball, one strike. The pitch off speed is hit toward third. Out at second one. Out at first two. Double play retires the side. The Cubs load the bases with one out and failed to score in the first. On we go to the bottom half. Steve Traxel takes the mound for the Cubs in a scoreless game. Dig the hole, dig the hole, dig the hole. Catch the tail, catch the tail, catch the tail. Bite the leg, bite the leg, bite the leg. Take a lesson from the dog. Focus on the simple things and you'll be happy. Find the fair, find the fair, find the fair. Now you have the freedom to fly southwest from Chicago Midway to St. Louis for $30. But hurry, must purchase by October 12th. Find the phone, find the phone. 
Catch plenty of Cubs action on your computer. Visit the Chicago Cubs website at www.cubs.com for live broadcasts, daily stats and game notes, player information, online access to tickets, and more. Visit the Cubs website today at www.cubs.com. Cubs fans, now you can show off your pride with merchandise from the official Cubs gift catalog, like official Cubs jackets, jerseys, shirts, and hats. To get your free copy of the Cubs gift catalog, visit the Cubs website at www.cubs.com or call 773-404-CUBS. You guys are in here again? I can't believe this! You're always in here nursing your injuries. I have never seen such a group of cream pops in my life! This is football! I need guys that can play! Oh, man, I thought he'd never leave. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Hot dog, anyone? Cubs load the bases and fail to score in the top of the first, and there's a bird's eye seat as they build beautiful new Miller Park right across the street from County Stadium in Milwaukee. That new facility will be ready in time for the 2000 season here in Bruce City. Here's a look at the Milwaukee lineup. A most disappointing year for Phil Garner and his Milwaukee team. They do have Vina, Loretta, and Cirillo atop the order. Burnitz has been their big power hitter as the cleanup man, then Marquise Grissom. Jeff Jenkins gets the start in left. Valentin Hughes and Roque will bat seventh, eighth, and ninth. And the Pepsi defense for Jim Riggleman and the Cubs. Hill Johnson and Sosa left to right. Gayetti, Hernandez, Morandini, and Grace in the infield. A battery of Scott Service and Steve Traxel. Going for win number 15, and this is 32nd start. And Chip, you talked about a disappointing year for the Brewers. Offensively, this has been a pretty solid baseball team. But their starting rotation just disintegrated. And when that happens, you have to elevate relievers into the rotation. Consequently, you've weakened both areas. Your starting pitching isn't all that good, and you've taken a few of your relievers and made them starters, and that eventually hurts the bullpen. Well, the ERA since the All Star break is over a run higher than it was in the first half of the year when the Brewers finished a game over 500. That's certainly indicative of what you're talking about. But it's been really tough on Phil Garner. Obviously, he wants to win. Obviously, the Brewers thought with the move to the National League, they'd be a much more competitive team. They thought they had a chance to compete for the division title this year. That has not at all been the case as Vina stands in and looks at a fastball from Traxel for ball one. Vina did very little last night. They kept the ball down on him. He kept trying to pull it, and he had nothing to show for it. When you keep him off base, you hold down the Brewers. He's a 3.07 hitter on the year. He scored 99 times. He gets hit by a lot of pitches. Pretty good with the glove at second base, too. A very valuable commodity. And there are those who say that this man may end up playing for somebody else in 1999. Well, if you get the ball inside, he's going to do a lot like what Biggio and Kendall do. He's just going to leave that arm there and get hit. That ball hit high in the air into right center field. Who wants it? It'll be Sammy Sosa. And Vina flies out for out number one. Now the first baseman, Mark Loretta. Loretta has absolutely tormented the Cubs this year. Last night he had three of Milwaukee's hits. Milwaukee as a team tallied nine safeties. So he had one third all by himself. He's hit over 400 against the Cubs this year. And Loretta without the huge power numbers is much like Jose Hernandez. He can play anywhere and gives you a quality effort everywhere he goes. And against Traxel, he's been tough. Steve delivers a quick strike. The wind blowing in here in Milwaukee. So Steve just pretend it's Wrigley Field with the wind howling in. And you'll do just fine today. Scoreless ball game in the Milwaukee first. That ball popped up down the right side and into the seats. And out of play, 0-2 to Loretta. Cubs 6 and 5 against Milwaukee this year. A big start last night for Terry Mulholland, who just continues to pitch amazingly for the Cubs. Whether it's out of the pen, whether it's in a starting role. Terry Mulholland was absolutely a godsend for the Cubs last night. The 0 2. Taken low. A ball, two strikes. Normally, Loretta is going to get the bat on the ball. He's only fanned 47 times and 416 at bats. And he did stay alive on that ball that was across the shoe tops. So it stays one and two. They had 52,000 
at County Stadium last night. And I wouldn't be surprised if Terry Mulholland even after pitching eight innings and 120 tosses last night if the Cubs needed him for a batter or two he'd be willing to take the ball today again. That ball hit on a line into right center field Johnson comes charging over and makes a fine running catch boy he covered a lot of ground out in right center two away. And that's a fine play by Lance Johnson. He got a good break on the ball. This ball was slicing away from him. It looked for a moment like it would find the gap, but Johnson had other ideas and he runs it down and makes the play. So Traxel, a fly ball pitcher, has gotten two fly outs here to start the Milwaukee game in the first inning. And the third baseman, Jeff Cirillo, will stand in. This guy turned in a couple of great defensive plays in the game last evening. He's a, a viable gold glove candidate at third base. He's made only 10 errors this year. At the hot corner only Cal Ripken of Baltimore has made fewer at that position in all of baseball it would be nice to retire Cirillo here so you didn't have to face Burnitz in the first inning with a base runner and Traxel gets ahead strike one called against Steve Traxel both of these guys have done quite a job and Burnitz has more runs batted in from the left side than anyone in our league the 0 one Fooled him with that pitch. 0 and 2. Honda so, like the night of Ken Griffey Jr. last night. Well, he's a pretty good player. He's got 55 and <laughs> it's unbelievable. And he's not in the race. Well, he's like Sammy. When he gets hot, he hits him in bunches. It would not surprise me to see Griffey take a real good shot at 60 before this week is over. And Traxel strikes out Cirillo. Service will throw him out at first, and Steve works a 1 2 3 Milwaukee first inning. Nothing doing after one at County Stadium. We are scoreless. I think the most important feeding is the one that you start in the fall, so your lawn starts to look healthier in the spring, and consequently, you need Scott's winterizer. When I put down winterizer in the fall, it allows us to develop a good, strong root base, and it allows the uh, lawn to endure the winter weather, and you get a real early greening. This grass is beautiful, thick, deep green. Uh, people will stop by and say, how'd you do that? Scott's winterizer gives the grass a kickstart in the fall and makes it really look great in the spring. Just tastes better. Check this out. Stuff goes there. Friends pile in here. You grab this. 132 horses go here. To take you and four of your friends here, there, anywhere. They'll think you're cool, but we'll know you're smart. From the old park to the new park, County Stadium, and there's Miller Park. It's expected to open up in the year 2000. I'm amazed, Steve, at the amount of progress they have made on that place since we were here last. It's shaping up as a beautiful facility, and it does have a little touch of Camden Yard in it from the angle we're looking at. Gary Gaetti leads off the Cubs second, and he takes high. One of the features that this park will have that Camden Yards won't have is a retractable roof. With the unpredictable weather in April and May, that'll come in big time handy here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Well, this is where you love to see Roque against a quality hitter. He's down 2 0. Gary Gaetti is looking for something middle in. He got it, but he missed it. 2 and 1. That was a pretty good changeup right there, and it shows that the young man and the catcher are thinking along some pretty good lines. Gary, a dead fastball hitter, and he got the off speed pitch, and it was a dandy. Two balls and a strike. Now it's three and one. Coyote, Morandini, and Scott Service in the Cubs second. The first inning really hurt the Cubs. They loaded the bases with one out and failed to score. Coyote sprays that ball out of play, and the count runs full now. Three balls, two strikes. Gary Coyote has been an amazing signing by the Cubs front office. In 32 games, he's hit 321 with seven home runs and 23 runs driven in. 
and he's played flawlessly over at third the payoff pitch is popped out of play right side again guy he just threw the bat at the ball that time to stay alive. OK has been one of the better starters for the Brewers and it's somewhat surprising because they didn't figure that he was going to do much when this season started but here he is. Again the three two it's chopped to the left side and Tom Gamboa knocks it down with the glove hand and he'll flip that ball into the seats to a young fan and make a friend here at County State. Gary Gaetti leading off the Cubs second a scoreless game. Off speed again pulled foul that one too hot for Tom to handle down there. You would think after two change ups that Gary would be seeing a fastball away. Let's see what Hughes has in mind. Three two. That one again pulled just foul at the third base back. Well very good news came out of the Kerry Wood performance today. This is Kevin Tappany will go to the mound in Friday's game. But Kerry Wood reported that he threw all of his pitches and he felt just great. And now a very difficult decision. As you look at the young man, he's got a chance to go again before this year's out. Good eye from Gary Gaetti draws the second walk from Mr. OK. And we will hear from Cubs pitching coach Phil Regan and get his report on Kerry Wood in just a little bit. But that is good news, and it is a very difficult decision that the Cubs have to make. He hasn't pitched in almost a month. So is it fair to put that kind of pressure on the kid to come out and throw like the Kerry Wood we saw for most of this season with two games to go, perhaps? I'm glad I don't have to make the decision. Here's Morandini. Mickey checks his swing and takes the ball. Okay, a lot like Pulsifer. Every time he throws a fastball, it's up in the zone. And he doesn't throw hard enough to get away with too many of those. Let's see if the Cubs can take advantage of it early. One ball, no strikes. Gaetti at first, nobody out. Pitch chopped right side. Loretta to second one. Relay back to first. The pitcher missed the bag. So Morandini grounds out, but he's aboard on the force play. 3 6 on the put out at second. Morandini's aboard with one away now. Looks to me like Roquet couldn't locate the bag. He was there in time, and this is the toughest of all double plays. The 3 6 1. The pitcher has to come over, and he's got to get there early. The return throw is good, but as you can see, Roquet just couldn't locate the bag. So they would have had two. Instead, the Cubs get an extra out this inning, and let's see if they can make him pay for it. And Mickey almost missed the bag as he hustled down the first baseline, but he's aboard for Scott Service. Well earlier this year Scott had a big game in Milwaukee hit a home run drove in another run in a three nothing Cub victory. Maybe he can do it again today for the Cubs. And you also have Steve Kreisler in the lineup and he's one of the best hitting pitchers. So he adds another dimension to his starts. A ball no strikes one on one out. We're in the Cubs second. Pitch out nothing doing. You don't think the Mets are watching this game today, do you? I would say they're interested spectators. But this has been a great, great race between the Mets and the Cubs, arch rivals for so many years. And there's a lot of baseball to be played yet. The 2 0. Nowhere near. Three balls, no strikes. How do you green light service here? Roque's got a good changeup. I think I'd just as soon see him take it. If he hits a ball on the ground, it's going to be two, and you've got a good hitting pitcher up next. Let's see what's on Riggs's mind. He was taking three balls and a strike. Well, now, if you want to stay out of the double play, this is a good time to send Mickey. He's got to watch the move, obviously, of Roque. But if you do send him, and Mickey's been awfully good on the base pads this year, you will stay out of the double play. Three balls, one strike, one on, one out. The pitch rifled out of play in two. The second deck. It's a late arriving crowd here in Milwaukee. You look out toward left field and see the expressway. Cars are still coming off the on ramps and the fans still pouring into the stadium. We had 52,000 here last night. This is the final home game of the year for the Brewers as well. We might approach 50,000 or more today as well. 
Three balls, two strikes. The runner goes. The pitch is fouled away again. Nikki looking for stolen base number 14. And Scott Service trying to avoid grounding into a double play. He's already done that 12 times. There's Mickey. There's service. The runner goes. Pitch rifled toward Loretta at first. Dead in his tracks. He makes the put out there. Service retired. Morandini is at second for Steve Traxel and two men out. And the fact that you're running with Morandini did indeed keep the Cubs out of a double play and kept the inning alive for Steve Traxel. So Mickey looking for contact. When he sees it's behind him, he realizes that Loretta has no play at all at second. Well, there you see the numbers on Traxel. A 267 hitter. He's 16 out of 60 on the year and has struck out only 18 times. The pitch to him is outside of ball. He has a chance to help himself here in the Cubs second. A nothing nothing game. One ball, no strikes. Way outside, it's 2 0. Oh. And Roque says there's something wrong with that baseball. I need one that has some strikes in it. Okay, an interesting story because he was signed as a six year minor league free agent. That was back on October 31st of last year. Now, he never really got much of a shot with the Mets. They kept him down in their low minors year after year after year. But he's had a pretty good shot this year. Well, Steve ought to see a pretty good pitch to hit here. Two balls, no strikes. The left hander fires it home, and it's a fastball, strike one call. Well, if you read your morning paper, you will see where Tony LaRussa endorses the VIP going to Sammy Sosa. He said, oh, sure, it would be nice if they could tie for it, but in reality, because the Cubs have been in the race all year, his vote would go to Sosa. That's some pretty nice praise. 2 1. Three balls and a strike. Well, this whole home run chase between McGuire and Sosa, I think you would agree, Steve, and everybody would agree that it's been handled with such class by both of those men. You'd expect Tony LaRusa to do the classy thing and, and say something like that for Sammy. That's that's wonderful. You love to see that. Three and one the count. He walked the pitcher. How about that? First and second, two out. And one of the Cubs' hottest hitters in Lance Johnson will stride to the batter's box. Three well, walks in an inning and two thirds so far. <laughs> Before that happens, there is going to be a visit to the mound. And you've got Don Rowe going out there. He's been out there a lot as the Cubs have just pasted the Brewers' pitching staff. Well, these battles have been battles of attrition. They've hammered the Cubs. They've scored over eight runs a game on average against the Cubs team. But it's just been a matter of who can survive the longest out on that mound. Unfortunately, a good majority of the time, it has been the Cubs, especially in that series at Wrigley Field, which was as explosive a series as we've ever seen. Well, you've seen 16 years worth of Cubs baseball. Was that the best series you ever saw? Well, the last two games were the best two games back to back I've ever seen played in Wrigley Field. When you come back from the type of deficits the Cubs came back from and won, win the ball game, you've got to say that that is quite a day's work. Coming from seven back, heading into the seventh inning at a 12 to 5 score. Well, another chance for the Cubs here with Lance Johnson way outside. Good stop by Hughes. That ball found his glove somehow, and it's ball one. Okay, came very close to his third wild pitch of the year, but for the good movement of Bobby Hughes. The stretch, the 1 0. Oh, another pitch low and away. 2 0. Oh, with Jose Hernandez waiting on deck. Well, many people would take a pitch here, but I think Lance, looking for a fastball, is going to try to hit this hard. He says he's back to his 40 ounce bat, and he's been hitting the ball with authority. 2 0. Oh. It's 3 0. Oh. He's another bad one away from walking the bases loaded again. He did that in the first inning before Glenn Allen Hill hit into a double play. He's walked two in this inning. 
Three and oh. He's done it again. Wow. Four walks already. Bases loaded for Jose Hernandez. So here's Jose. We have to wonder too, Steve, if so many of these players from the Caribbean have their thoughts and prayers elsewhere during today's play. Roque from the Dominican Republic, Jose from Puerto Rico, Sammy from the DR as well. Hurricane George is just pummeling the Caribbean today. That pitch misses inside. It's currently right over Haiti today. And a lot of our players on the Cubs team haven't been able to get in touch with friends and loved ones back home. They are obviously concerned and wanted us to send along our thoughts and prayers for their safety and well-being as the awful weather continues to cause all kinds of problems down south. The 1-0. Off speed, he missed with it. 2-0. Oh. Well, how about this? Well, now you're going to see a fastball. You can pretty much take it to the bank. And if it's hittable, Jose can drive in a couple of runs rather easily. He's working off the windup. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch. That one's right through there. Two and one. Bill Garner looking on and He's seen both of his starters get in early trouble in both of these games. The 2 1. Fouled away. He's battled back to even the count 2 and 2. Bases full of Cubs again, this time in the second. The Cubs did not score in the first. It's still a nothing nothing game. Orandini at third, Traxel at second, Lance Johnson at first. Now the 2 2 pitch due to the Cubs shortstop. Here it comes. Off speed, he missed. Three and two now. Mm -hmm. He's got to throw a strike now. Well, now you're going to see everybody running. So even on a bloop double or anything in the gap, it's going to score three runs. And again, you would certainly think he'd be throwing a fastball here. Three balls, two strikes. There go the runners, the pitch. He walked in. Cubs have a one nothing lead. Five walks in the game. Morandini scores. And here's Mark Grace with the bases loaded and the Cubs up a run. RBI 75 for Jose Hernandez and he did it with his eyes not his bat. And the Cubs with four walks in the inning have taken the lead one to nothing. And Phil Garner can't believe it. This young man's been a pretty good pitcher this year but he had trouble against the Cubs in Wrigley Field. And he's got trouble again. And trouble represented by that man, Mark Grace, who hit a rocket toward right. Fernando Vina dived, had the ball in his glove. It trickled away from him, and Grace was credited with a base hit in the Cub first inning. A chance to put a crooked number on that scoreboard here in the second. The pitch is a fast strike. Now you'd have to think you're going to see a breaking ball, and on a breaking ball, Steve Traxel has got to be coming down the line. Because Hughes made one miraculous stop already. I'm not sure if he's got another one in him. Grace choked up on that bat. The 0-1 is another strike. 0-2. Well, Roque looking a little angry right now. The Cubs have scored the first run of the game without benefit of a hit. A balk. He balked. He's balked on a run. Well called by Jerry Davis. And everything going wrong for the Brewers. And the Cubs just enjoying every minute of this one. That's the first balk of the year for OK, and it cost him a run. No balls, two strikes. It's two to nothing. The pitch. Strike three called. And the inning is over. But how about that? The Cubs get four walks in the inning a balk score twice without benefit of a hit and still leave two runners on base after one and a half it's the Cubs two, Milwaukee nothing it's coming and this time there's something new now there's a wind tunnel by Hoover that's self-propelled, so it almost works by itself. Tests show wind tunnel picks up more dirt than any other clean air upright. Hoover, and now you can get one.
that's self-propelled. Self-propelled wind tunnel. Over 30 years ago in our laboratories, eye care was revolutionized with the introduction of Visine. Today, our latest advance, an even better Visine. Advanced Relief Visine. Its unique formula gets the red out, plus more. This computer image of an irritated eye simulates how Advanced Relief Visine spreads the cooling, soothing, refreshing relief of three moisturizers. Discover how good your eyes can feel. With Advanced Relief Visine, it gets the irritation out. Oh, here comes the skipper. Looks like there's gonna be some fireworks now. What are you doing tonight? Helen and I don't have any plans. Great! Sparky and his wife are coming to my house for dinner. Would you like to join us? That'd be great! Great! If I can beat the traffic, I'll pick up some Bud Light! Bud Light! Looks like you're out of here! I'll see you and the wife tonight! For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You have a beautiful home here! Well, thank you very much! A participating advertiser for Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is the Discover Card. Discover Card, the card that pays you back with a cashback bonus award. 1-800-CONTACTS. Exact same contact lenses delivered to your door for less than you're paying now. Call 1-800-CONTACTS. Save the trip. Save the money. Cubs 2, Milwaukee nothing after one and a half. What did Roque do, Stoney, to draw the balk call in the second run? Well, it's interpreted that he comes to a set position and then without stepping back off the mound, he separates his hands. Now watch, right there. He separates his hands and then steps back off the mound, and that's what Jerry Davis caught, and that cost him a run. So and we've had a couple of the pitchers out there, Pulsifer and Roque, pretty much without their head in the game for the first two starts. And the Cubs will take all the breaks they can get. They got four walks. In that second inning, scored twice without benefit of a hit. Now Traxel has a two-run lead as he faces Brewer cleanup man Jeremy Burnett. What a year this guy has had for the Brew Crew. He's been unbelievable. He's hit 38 home runs. He's driven in 124, and he's hit 263 for a Milwaukee team that probably did not expect that from him this year. Well, this year he's two for seven against Traxel. Both of them have been home runs. Steve gets ahead with strike one then took something off and now is ahead 0 and 2. Burnitz is a free swinger and will go down on strikes. He's fanned 151 times. So you can keep it out of the strike zone use that head high fastball or that splitter in the dirt and most likely it'll be number 152 for Burnitz. And it is say cheese baby one down. Frozen like a picture. Burnitz is strikeout victim number two. Service wants it away, and Steve Traxel gets it right there. And Jeremy thought that was kind of a generous outside corner, but Steve Traxel very happy that the call is extending out that far. Yes, indeed. Never hear a pitcher complain about a wide strike zone. No, that's just a delight. <laughs> four up, four down as Marquise Grissom stands in. And he takes the ball low one ball no strikes. Steve will tell you in his last start against Cincinnati he did not have his good rhythm he did not have much confidence in any of his pitches he didn't last very long in that ball game he went three and two thirds innings. Today though he looks like a man on a mission it is early however but he looks very very sharp to start this ball game and again when you only have four left every game is huge. Well also there was a bit of a chance for his arm to rebound because in his last two starts he went a little over nine innings and so this should be a good day for him. Two balls and a strike to Marquise Grissom. And this Brewer team doesn't run particularly well and they don't run often. So that is a break for Steve Traxel and Scott Service. Fouled away. Count evens two and two. Cubs two runs on two hits nothing across for Milwaukee. That's Jim Lefevre with Phil Garner and Jim is the new hitting instructor of this Brewer team and he's just an exceptional hitting coach. He's going to do a good job here. They're going to implement a few new programs over the winter time to help out their hitters. That ball inside the back fair and down the left field line Grissom with outstanding speed will reach second as that ball stops. In foul ground to left field. So it's a one out double for Grissom, and the Brewers have their first hit here in the second inning. No chance at all for Gary Gaetti as this one was threaded right down the line. 
Grissom got a fork ball. And he pulled it. Gary Getty playing him off the line just sees it. Die in left field. So you tip your cap to Grissom who has his 28th double. He's in scoring position now for Jeff Jenkins. And this young man has pretty good power toward left and left center field. With that in mind, Glenn Allen Hill is way off the line. He's taking away the gap in left center. They'll give him the left field line. That ball hit like a rocket to right, but Sammy is right there. He's got it. There's the out. Grissom's going to try to take third. The throw is on target, but late. Jenkins flies to right. Grissom takes third on the tag, and now Jose Valentin, the shortstop, will try to drive in the first Milwaukee run with two men down. Tom Gamboa managed Jose Valentin in. Winter ball and he said that the best way to contend with this guy is keep throwing him a steady diet of off speed pitches that fork ball down try to stay away from him if you go to the fastball at all but he is a dead fastball hitter from the left side and he's a dead pull hitter from the left side so if you stay away you'll probably get that ground ball to the right side and the ground ball should be the third out of the inning Cubs two Brewers nothing runner at third two away for Valentin. With 15 homers on the campaign and high and tight ball one. And as you can see left handed. Overwhelming majority of his hits to right field and. For a guy who is not. A very powerful guy. He can hit it a long way. All of his home runs have come from this side of the plate so be careful here. One and oh. There's the off speed a hot shot to Mark Grace he'll smother it step on the bag inning over. No runs one hit a man left at third after two Cubs two Brewers nothing. If you control your diabetes by diet or oral medication I've got some great news for you. Medicare now covers testing supplies for all diabetics not just those taking insulin shots. Call Diabetic Services Care Line at 1-800- 777-2032 to start getting your supplies at little or no cost. When you call our care line, you get real people taking care of your needs and the finest quality brand name supplies. So don't wait. Call our care line today. My boy, fine accountant, knows the value of a dollar. Still, it hit us big when he moved back in with us. Then one night, there it is on TV, the big game. We hit it big. We're mega millionaires. My wife and I, we look at our son, settled in so confident, and we get the same thought. Something big you'd like to do? Play the mega million dollar big game from the Illinois Lottery. You could hit it big. Son, your own place. We do anything for that boy. <laughs> It's back, and this time, there's something new. Now there's a wind tunnel that's self-propelled. New self-propelled wind tunnel. It introduced the most powerful overall line of pickups on the planet and stamped the terms V10 and Magnum Power indelibly on the face of truckdom. It kicked open the door to the next generation of pickups and made such an impression that today, this is all you have to see to know what's behind it. Well, I never took Spanish in high school, but I think that means how do you say home run in Spanish? Sosa. And speaking of home runs, let's check out who's cleaning up in baseball. Brought to you by Hoover since the break. Sammy and Albert have been awesome in Chicago. As has Mark McGuire, Manny Ramirez, and Vladimir Guerrero. And that's who's cleaning up in baseball for Hoover. And Vladimir Guerrero will look at that Mets pitching staff one more time tonight. Let's go, Vladimir. Well, that young man can really play. So here's Sammy Sosa. He walked his first time up against Rafael Roque. 2 0 in favor of the Cubs. The line, the pitch. It's a ball outside. One and oh. Big Cub fan Margie Nix watching from South Bend, Indiana today. Open to see Sammy hit number 64. The 1 0. 
Ripped foul back. He's getting pitches to hit, and he's just offline. One and one. When the Cubs travel to Houston in a game seen at seven o'clock here on WGN, it'll be Kevin Tappany against Jose Lima. Shane Reynolds will go on Saturday. Mike Hampton will go on Sunday, and the Cubs have to make the announcements of who they want to throw on Saturday and Sunday. The one one is high. Two balls and a strike. Swing it easy Sammy and the ball will jump for you. The two one. Off speed stayed eye high. It's three and one. They are homer happy here in Milwaukee. They're booing everything out of the zone. They'll boo again. Two straight walks for Sosa. At six walks for OK in this game. Man, oh man. I would think they'd have that bullpen up and going here pretty soon. Although last night they used that bullpen quite a bit with Patrick Woodall, Reyes, Mullins, and Weathers. And the starter today, Rafael Roque, has no conception of the strike zone. And let's see if the Cubs can put a little more daylight between themselves and the Brewers right here in the third. Well, here's Glenn Allen Hill. He hit into an around the horn double play to end the Cubs first. Runner at first, nobody out. That ball hit a mile high toward right. Vina goes out. Bernitz comes in. It'll be the Milwaukee second baseman, Vina. One away. So Sosa back at first. And the cut third baseman, Gary Gaiety, will stand in. He walked in the second. And we have the proposed pitching matchups for that huge series in Atlanta. Bruce Chen going against Rick Reed in the first game. Tom Glavin against Al Leiter in the second game, and Greg Maddox against Armando Arenoso. In a series, the Cubs are very interested in. Yeah, I would imagine so. Here's Gaetti. Swung a high pitch and missed it. 0-1. I don't believe the Mets have one in Atlanta this year. In fact, they're three and six against the Braves overall. 0-3 at Turner Field. No balls and a strike. One on, one out. The pitch. Conversely, for the Cubs, they know they can play well in Houston. Cubs played very well down in the Astrodome before watching Houston come back to Chicago and sweep us in dramatic fashion. And there's the threesome that the Cubs will face. Unfortunately, not in that picture. The big unit, Randy Johnson, who will go tonight. And nothing personal Randy but uh, <laughs> see you next year perhaps or in the NLCS one ball one strike inside it's two and one no activity in the Brewer bullpen well, when you're all over the place as Roque is today you're not going to get the benefit of any close pitch from Jerry Davis if you're throwing a lot of strikes then they will give you the occasional pitch Sammy leads at first he's going to pitch cut on Left Jenkins Mets plays it. It's in the corner. Sammy's going to score. He'll route third. Gaetti on his way to second, and the Cubs have their third run. It goes as a base hit. An air on Jenkins. No run batted in, but three up on the board for the Cubs. As the Brewers have literally self-destructed in this series. Granted they're getting a little help from the Cub hitters but they're putting a lot of pressure on the defense and the defense has not responded. This is a rifle shot into left field and Jenkins just olays it. That was very poor defense but the Cubs glad to have it as Sammy scores Gaetti's at second on the single in the air and Morandini takes a ball low. Three to nothing Cubs now in the third. Hot shot hit toward Vina at second. He'll handle that. Runner to third now with two away. Well, reading the press clippings today, Ed Lynch was talking about when he played with the Mets how discouraging it was during one of the pennant races. That with the Cubs playing during the day, how frustrating it was to come to the ballpark and know that the Cubs had won and knowing that the Mets had to go out and win later on that night to keep pace with Chicago. 
Hopefully that will happen again tonight. Well, you put a W up on the board. And then there are very few options as far as holding ground. So the Cubs trying to do just that. And they're trying to take advantage of a very wild Rafael Roque today. He's walked six men. And now has a runner at third with two outs and Scott service in the batter's box. Scott grounded out to first his first time up. Cubs three runs on three hits. Trying to even their road record. At 39 and 39. The 0 1. And we said at the start of the second half of this season, if the Cubs were going to be a playoff team, they had to turn around their road schedule. They're trying to do that again today. The schedule heavily tilted on the road for the Cubs in the second half of this year. And since the break, the Cubs 9 over 500 at 40 and 31. One ball, one strike. Roque off the stretch with a runner at third and two outs. The pitch popped up right side. Loretta on the run has room near the stands, hauls it in, and the inning is over. The Cubs get a run on a hit, a walk, and an error, and after two and a half, lead the Brewers by three. Hey, you can't watch this. Oh, you're a kid? All right, just don't tell any grown-ups I let you watch this. Hysteria. Weekday mornings at 8.30 on WGN. At Uniroyal, in order to make a point about our new nail guard tires, we added a few to our test track. Nail guard tires. Designed to seal 90% of tread punctures. Instantly and permanently. Only from Uniroyal. There comes a point in your life when you outgrow those cute little pickups, at which time you might want to consider something a little more adult. A truck that can run rings around compacts. Dodge Dakota. With more room and more available towing, payload, and power. Magnum power. Dakota. It's time to put away the toys. If you thought AT&T One Ray Plus made calling simple at 10 cents a minute... A little too simple, maybe. Now there's something that'll have you calling even more. What, are you sick? Introducing 5 cents a minute on weekends. That's half off. <laughs> AT&T One Ray Plus. 10 cents a minute, anytime, anywhere, and now 5 cents a minute on weekends. How do you sleep at night? Some of you dialing perhaps a little too hard. To get 5 cent weekends, call now to enroll. Two worlds fighting for survival. It's designed to kill. Earth, final conflict. Saturday at 5 on WGN. The episode that changed it all. Zeus. Your true destiny is on Olympus. On the next Hercules. Saturday at 3 on WGN. All exits lead to County Stadium in Milwaukee today. Cubs three, Brewers nothing after two and a half. It'll be Hughes, Roque, and Vina for the Brew Crew. Against Steve Traxel, who surrendered only one hit. He struck out two and hasn't walked anyone in his first two passes in this ballgame. Traxel trying to win for the 15th time. That would be a career high for him. And the Cubs with Kevin Tappany already winning his 19th. The Cubs. Looking to have two 15 plus game winners on their starting staff for the first time since 1992. That's when Greg Maddox won 20 and Mike Morgan won 16. We're in the third inning. It'll be the Brewer catcher, Bobby Hughes. The Mets play Montreal later on tonight. Montreal's gotten the best of New York in the 1998 schedule. They've won seven of 11. They've won three of five at Shea Stadium. So here we go with Hughes. Off speed roller towards second. Morandini will flip quickly in time. One away. One pitch, one out. Hughes is retired. Or okay, will bat before he does. Let's pause quickly for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. With Steve Stone, Chip Carey, and our entire WGN crew from County Stadium in Milwaukee. 
Things looking up for the Cubs so far. It's three to nothing after two and a half. Roque is one out of 12 as a major league hitter this year. And he looks at a fastball outside. Ball one. Steve looks like he's got pretty good stuff today. There's a lot of zip on the fastball, and he's hit his spots. Has yet to walk a Brewer. What I like too, Stoney, he's grabbing the ball and he's throwing it. He's not rubbing the horse hide to death out there. He's ready to get it and go. And don't forget, we haven't had anybody on first base yet. The 1 1. You had to bring that up. Foul <laughs> away. It's 1 and 2. Well, we had a guy at second. He didn't slow down then, so. There are 42 eighth graders here today from St. Jude School in South Holland, Illinois, with their teachers, Andrea Linz and Mr. J. And it is a gorgeous day for baseball. One ball, two strikes. Not a bad idea to play hooky on a day like today. The one, two. Strike three. Say cheese. Three strikeouts for Traxel. Two up, two down in the third. Well, they're going to have to come in at the corners for Vina just in case he decides to try to bunt his way on. Vina 0 for 5 in the series. And there's Gary Gaetti who's in at the cutout at third. And Mark Grace even with the bag at first. Two up, two down. Vina fly to right his first time. He's 0 for 5 in the series. Final home game of the year for Milwaukee. They jet to L.A. for four to wrap up the season. And a ball high, one and zero. One ball, no strikes. It's two and zero. Oh. Vina, three oh six hitter. Needs 11 hits for 200. He scored 99 runs. That's a strike. He's been in the Mets system. He was with the Mariners. Now with Milwaukee. Steve Traxel trying to win a big ball game for the Cubs today. Misses high to the pesky leadoff man. Three and one. And there was the bunt possibility, but the pitch was out of the zone. Vini has stolen 21 bases, so you just as soon keep him off base. The line, the three one. He lost to ball four outside. First tracks a walk. It comes with two men out. And now Mark Loretta, the batter, who was. A flyout victim his first time up. This one just misses on the outside corner. And Vina does take the first walk. Now, if he gets adventuresome on the bases, as he is prone to do, you can pick him off first base. That would be the easiest way to get out of this inning and don't have to deal with Loretta or possibly Cirillo. Or Burnitz. Let's hope it doesn't come to that here in the third inning. Cubs up three zip in the third inning. Good fastball. Nice recovery. 0 and 1. Cubs have won 20 of Steve's 31 starts this year. He's picked off six already. Base Steelers right at 500. And although Ovina's stolen 21 bases, he's been caught 16 times. That is not a very good percentage. And he set back to the back standing up. Well, they're still filing in here at County Stadium. Looks to me like there has to be right around 50,000 here today. I know they had 43,000 advanced ticket sales. And on a beautiful day, there's a great reason to come to the ballpark. Just missed. Count evens a ball and a strike. Let's not get too cute here with the heart of the Brewer order coming up here in the third inning. Cubs three, Brewers nothing. Last, last night it sounded almost like a home game for the Cubs. Did it ever? That was awesome. A lot of Cubs fans made the trek north. 
We'll head to Houston after today's game. The 1 1. Low and away. Two balls and a strike. Well, if you're thinking about any movement, and I'm not sure that Garner is going to gamble three runs down, but this would be the pitch. They're shading him just a step toward right center field. That's where Lance Johnson ran down a shot in the first inning. Two balls, one strike. I give Vinia my best pickoff move right here. He brings it home and he lines it into left. So Loretta has been a constant cup tormentor. Vina's going to try to take third and he'll make it. The ball hits awkwardly on the dirt. Uh, and Loretta takes second base. That's not what you want to do. Vina baited him into doing that. And Glenn Allen Hill has to get that ball into second. You've got to make sure the trailer on the play doesn't get into second base. You see Vina kind of slow down and then he accelerated. There's no chance for Glenn Allen Hill to get him. This throw has to be to second base. Then you got runners at the corners and a base hit only scores one not two. So there's a mental mistake. And let's see if Steve Traxel can pitch through it. He'll face Cirillo who struck out his first time. Cirillo 0 for 5 in the series. Cubs leading 3 nothing but Cirillo a chance to tie the ball game perhaps. He's hit 14 home runs this year. Two outs in the Brewer third. Draxel will work off the stretch with runners at second and third. The pitch up and in. Ball one. Burnett's waiting on deck. With two outs and runners in scoring position, Jeff Cirillo has been terrific. And one of the reasons why he is that good in these situations is he'll go to right and right center field when the pitcher invariably tries to stay away. Cirillo also has a couple of home runs against Traxel, so he can also pull the ball if he has to. Missed inside. It's 2 0. Oh. You do not want to get to the man in the on deck circle. Burnitz has been murdered, especially against the right handers of this league. Second time through the order, a little more troublesome for Traxel here. A walk and a single to Vina and Loretta, respectively. The 2 0 to Cirillo. It's gone to 3 0. I'm thinking, even with Burnitz in the on deck circle, they would give Cirillo a 3 0 green light here. And I think Steve Traxel has to think along the same lines. This guy can do you a lot of damage. And if Traxel just lays one in, look for Cirillo to have a pretty good cut. Three balls, no strikes. 3 0 Cubs, runners second and third, two outs. All this trouble coming after two men were down. The pitch. Green light, chopper to third. Guy and he gloves it, grabs it, guns across in time. And the inning is over. They green lighted him, and the Cubs take advantage. Cirillo spikes the helmet as the Brewers are shut down again in the third. Dig the hole, dig the hole, dig the hole. Catch the tail, catch the tail, catch the tail. Bite the light, bite the light, bite the light. Take a lesson from the dog. Focus on the simple things and you'll be happy. Find the fair, find the fair, find the fair. Now you have the freedom to fly southwest from Chicago Midway to St. Louis for $30. But hurry, must purchase by October 12th. Find the phone, find the phone. With day scheduled down to the minute, no one has time to wait for prescription refills. But with Walgreens' new 24-hour touchstone prefill system, your refills are prefilled. Just dial the number on your prescription bottle, set your pickup time, and keep your day right on schedule. Your prescription will be ready at 645. Refills that are ready when you are, only at Walgreens. It took some pretty big strawberries to make better tasting strawberry pop tarts. But now they're improved with the best strawberry taste ever. 
Cubs by three after three. Well, we told you a couple of times that the Cubs very encouraged by Kerry Woods' side performance today. We asked Phil Regan, the Cubs pitching coach, to evaluate what Kerry's repertoire looked like. He was outstanding today. He threw, uh, had a, a tremendous fastball. Uh, his slider was sharp. Had as good a curveball probably he's had all year. Uh, a good changeup, and he and he and he really started to open up and let the ball go. I'm not sure it would be fair to a 20, 21 year old kid to put him on the mound when he hasn't been out there for 30 days and hasn't seen a hitter for 30 days and hasn't thrown a curveball except for one time on the side uh, to stick him out there in, in probably the biggest game of the year and uh, put it all on his shoulders. Steve Traxel looks at a ball one ball one strike and it's hard to argue with that logic from Phil Regan that would be a very difficult assignment and reading between the lines you would have to think that the Cubs might be interested in Kerry during the playoffs if he got some pitching under his belt before then not necessarily in a start in Houston in a critical game trying to get to the playoffs. But as you've said that's not as easy as a fan might think it is for a guy that's used to starting coming out of the bullpen like he may have to do not a very easy task to make that adjustment. One ball two strikes to Traxel leading off the Cubs top half of the fourth two and two. Two of the three runs that have been scored were via the walk and the other one when a double play wasn't turned. And it looked fairly innocuous at the time but Roque couldn't locate the bag on a return throw from shortstop that gave the Cubs another out in the second inning. If he touches the bag the Cubs come up empty as it turns out the Cubs get two runs. Draxel with a good at bat going here. Not two runs without a hit too. That was the amazing thing. As many men as the Cubs have left on from time to time this year. It was nice to see. The Cubs score a couple without getting the big hit. Three nothing after three. Cubs have the lead the pitch. Steve backs away from another ball three and two. He walked and scored one of the Cub three runs. Roque has walked six. His high for a major league game coming in was five. He did that against the Pirates on the 7th of September. 3 2. Traxel put his foot in the bucket and flies to shallow right. One away. So Traxel goes down, but he goes down with a battle. And the Cubs bring the top of their order up. Johnson and Hernandez. Lance has doubled. He's walked. He's been stranded at third base twice. The Cubs have left five through three. Lance has that average up to 282. And 80 hits on the year. The pitch. Not bad for a guy who missed most of the season with that wrist problem. A strike evens the count. Roque really telegraphing that change. Missed with it. Two balls and a strike. What a difference a half can make for you. Lance this year. Today is playing in his 81st game. He has scored 50 runs. The 2-1. Missed outside three balls at a strike. Well, Lentz is saying that the key for him at least is using that heavier bat the 40 ounce bat that he's used to now he can hit the ball with a little more authority. And that's what he's done recently as the hand has felt better. That ball rifle right back to the pitcher. How about that. Two men out. I don't think Roque ever saw it. I think he's fortunate that it happened to stick in the glove as Lance Johnson hits a rocket. And Roque able to snag it but I'm not sure how. It's right back at him and he is fortunate to have made that play. Watch it again. As Lance gets that fastball he's looking for on three and one. And Roque just in self defense gets the glove up. Well he could have been hurt by that ball. It was really humming back at him. So Johnson's retired for the first time. Two men out. 
one of the things that I really don't miss about pitching is right there. Well, I can't imagine with your stuff that you ever gave up that many back up the middle. Oh yeah. Hernandez <laughs> grounds out to third. And the inning is over. Three up, three down in the fourth. Roque with a little self-defense keeps the Cubs scoreless in the fourth inning. Three sisters. You saw that, right? Complete strangers until their mother's secret bonds them forever. Just once can't you trust me? You turn me into a witch. Their mother always told them they were special. <laughs> Shannon Doherty, Holly Marie Combs, and Alyssa Milano, Charmed. Premiering Wednesday, October 7th on WGN. A lot of folks in Johnson City, Tennessee will tell you when you need a part for your car, go to AutoZone. The parts are top quality, the prices are low, and the people are helpful, like Gary Jennings. You see, when it comes to auto parts, folks will tell you Gary really knows his stuff. Oh, sure, they know there are other parts stores in town, but when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice from folks like Gary, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Those are some pretty harmonies you got going there, boy. You sure can hit the high notes. Careful, Tim. Next thing you know, Road Talk will want to be singing back up. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's still a sore subject with Road Dog. Bud Light is proud to sponsor Tim McGraw. Maybe you can sing on a few sad songs. <laughs> All right. A participating advertiser for Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is the new Dodge. From cars to minivans to trucks, it's about change. The new Dodge. Meet Zach and Slater. Make a date. With the babes of Bayside High. Catch the next Saved by the Bell. Weekdays at 4, starting October 5th. Yeah, let's see if Sammy can get to 67 by the end of the day. Wouldn't that be a story if he could hit four home runs today? Yeah, but they have to start pitching to him. Well, he's, he's walked got, twice. He's got two walks. That's not fair. Here's Burnett's leading off the Milwaukee fourth. Cubs enjoying a three to nothing lead. Wherever you are, we're glad you're with us. Watching the Cubs and Brewers battle at County Stadium. And Traxel fooled him with a breaking ball. 0 and 1. Let's send along birthday greetings to Ray Metzger looking on in Pine, Arizona. His daughter Renee at the ball game today. So happy birthday, Ray. Traxel will go through the middle of the Brewers order here in the fourth. Four, five, and six. And the count now evens. Add a ball and a strike. The Cubs and Mets tied in the wild card. Again, if the teams finish tied. There will be a one game playoff Monday in New York. Things looking a lot better than they did at the start of last night, however. No doubt about that. The 1 1. That just missed. The amazing thing about this wild card race is the fact that the Cubs and Mets have been within a game of each other every day since the 8th of August. That's incredible. That truly is incredible. 2 and 1. Foul tipped into services glove two and two Traxel's fooling this guy with the off speed stuff. I don't think I'd like to throw him a fastball as he can park it a mile away. He's hit 38 bombs. On he, can, he can also hit it out to left as easily as right. But I would think a fork ball or the good curveball down here would probably do the trick. A roller foul toward first. And the count stays two and two. Well, friends, if you're looking for comprehensive coverage of the Cubs as they vie for the National League playoffs, well, Vineline, the Cubs monthly newspaper, provides a complete package of Cubs coverage for fans nationwide. Subscriptions start at only $19.95, and all two year subscribers get a free copy of the Ryan Sandberg commemorative program. www.cubs.com, the website to visit, or dial 773 404 Cubs to order. Burnett's not going quietly here in the fourth. With two lefties opposing the Cubs, Scott Service gets the back to back starts. Day game after a night game. He's in there again. 
Traxel ready to go, and once again the 2 2 takes care of Burnett. He swings and he misses, and for the second time he strikes out. Boy, he looked awful in that swing. Well, we talked about getting that fork ball down in the dirt, and Burnett's a strikeout victim. As Traxel set him up with some inside fastballs and then put him away with a good fork ball and a nice stop by Scott Service as he applies the tag. So Jeremy Burnett's no stranger to the strikeout. Now fanned 153 times. So he's retired here in the fourth from Marquise Grissom. He has one of the two Milwaukee hits. That hit a double with one out in the Brewers second. Boy, what a day here in Milwaukee. Couldn't ask for better weather. And listening to the comments coming out of the Cub Clubhouse, reading the newspapers, you can tell that every one of the Cubs very much impressed with the effort of Terry Mulholland last oh. night. Unbelievable. In, in what really was a critical game for the Cubs. After a three game losing streak and just a terrible series against Cincinnati, Terry Mulholland came out of that bullpen to get a start. And all he did was give the Cubs eight strong innings, one run on six hits, turned it over to Rod Beck for an inning. And the Cubs pulled even in the wild card. He's a consummate pro, folks. One and one. That missed. Two balls and a strike. Well, all of us who know Terry know that he's much happier as a starting pitcher. He realized that wasn't going to be his role this year, but he has done absolutely everything that Jim Riggleman has asked of him. Grissom, a one hopper to short. Jose fields it, fires it to first in time, two away. Well that's what you have to love about Terry. He wants the ball in any situation. He's not afraid to take it. He wants to start. He's made no bones about that. And when he's been given the opportunity he's backed up his desires by pitching great baseball. He's three and oh as a starter now. Well I think he's going to be a starter next year and probably the only question is where. Because he's shown that he has a lot of life left in that arm. He keeps himself in phenomenal shape. And he can throw seemingly on a daily basis and still give you a good performance. Jeff Jenkins hits a fly ball to left that Glenn Allen Hill ought to catch. And he does. And Steve Traxel has a very easy one, two, three, fourth inning right through the heart of the Milwaukee order. On to the fifth we go. The Cubs blanking the brew crew three zip. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Hoover. Nobody gets the dirt like Hoover. Nobody. Both tires fueling out the door. Feel the heat radiating out of your skin. It's nasty hot. We asked some of the hottest guys in the pits to switch antiperspirants. Ultra guy degree. Body heat activated. Wow, I've never seen this before. When your body heat rises, degree ultra dry's powerful new form releases extra protection when you need it most. This is one of the few products that can keep up with me. It kept me dry. Ultra dry. Work better than my old stick. New degree ultra dry. Now more than ever, your body heat turns it on. The proof is in the pits. At Uniroyal, in order to make a point about our new nail guard tires, we added a few to our test track. Nail guard tires, designed to seal 90% of tread punctures, instantly and permanently, only from Uniroyal. When I put down Scott's winterizer in the fall, it allows us to develop a good, strong root base. You get a real early greening. People will stop by and say, how'd you do that? Scott's winterizer gives the grass a kickstart in the fall and makes it really look great in the spring. Gee, that oatmeal was little. Yeah. You done with those sausages? Yeah, you done with them hash browns? Sure. You need some help with that bacon? <laughs> How'd I get heartburn? All I had was oatmeal. You cutting my land. Are you kidding? Aluminum and magnesium? You want Tums. Tums has calcium. Tums calcium knocks out heartburn fast, then goes to your bones to help keep them stronger, longer. How about a bag of donuts for the road? How about a bottle of Tums? Welcome to the Tanner Circus of Fun. Wow, neat. See the clowns in action. Pretty cool, huh? On Full House. Weekdays at 5, starting October 5th. Cubs by three after four. Mark Grace leads it off here at County Stadium, and he looks at a ball with Steve Stone. Chip Carey, welcome to County Stadium. Cubs doing exactly what they had to do after that disappointing series at home. They've come out and played very well here in Bruce City. 
And it's really amazing how much better the team looks if they get a quality job out of the starting pitcher. Last night, Terry Mulholland. Today, it's Steve Traxel, and he's been terrific through four. And let's hope that continues. Mark Grace checks his swing, hits a fly ball into shallow center that's going to be caught by Marquise Grissom. And Grace flies out for Sammy Sosa. This man is overdue, but remember, Mark McGuire went through a homerless slump, a hitting slump as well. You just hope Sammy can find himself before we head down to the Astrodome. And the Cubs are doing it in this series really without Sammy Sosa. That's a testament to the ball club and the fans as one on their feet once again to watch this Sosa at bat. He's been up twice. He's walked twice. And it appears that Roque is starting to find himself. He's retired the last six Cubs in order. Sammy has walked twice. He scored once. Sosa on the year now. Has walked a career high 72 times. Three to nothing in favor of the Cubs. The line, the pitch. Here's a ball. He's not giving him anything good to hit. And the fans here, many of them Cub fans, letting their displeasure be known. A cascade of boos with every pitch out of the zone. And there's been a lot of them today to Sammy. And now time is gone. Well, maybe we need to see some more of those Waveland Avenue signs in left field. They had them out in fours last night. The line, here comes the 1 0. Swung on, belt to deep toward right. Burnett's on the run toward the corner, looks up. He did it. It's out of here. Sosa with a home run, number 64. Sammy took it to the shortest part of the ballpark and it's 64 and 155 for Sammy Sosa. And Stoney I'm sure part of that blast goes out to his island nation the Dominican Republic and all the folks in the Caribbean who are struggling under Hurricane George today. I know Sammy's thoughts and prayers are with everyone down south and he's hit his 64th homer of the year in Milwaukee. And the Cubs have a four to nothing lead. He's hit his 20th to right or right center field. And that one just kept slicing away from Bernitz as he got to the wall. He realized that the park would not hold it. So he ends an 0 for 21 hitless streak by hitting number 64 here in Milwaukee. And the crowd here buzzing. They saw Big Mac. And now they've seen Sammy Sosa. He's hit his 11th home run of the year against Milwaukee pitching. That's the highest total against any National League team. Long run Loretta. He can't make the grab. And a big time collision with Vigna. And they're still down. But everybody's all right as Hill pops it foul. The first pitch that Sammy saw in the zone he did what Jeff Pentland has been telling him to do he went to right field. And with the wind blowing across and out toward right Sammy got it up in the jet stream and got just enough to take it out. Well we had said it looked like he was so very pull conscious. Since that last home run in San Diego if he's going to break out of that slump and start hitting homers and bunches again that's the way he's going to be able to do it. Maybe Roque will change his number to 64. The one two. He'll try to check his swing could not swings and misses but he'll reach first. So every break continues to go the Cubs way. Hill strikes out but he's aboard with one out. 64 home runs. And now one behind Mark McGuire. Still got a long way to go in this one. Sammy's going to hit for sure one more time, possibly two more times. And here comes Ken Rowe once again to talk with Roe K, who's given up two of Sammy's homers this year. 
one number 64 to McGuire and one number 64 to Sosa I mean folks I can't tell you what a thrill it is every day to sit down with the statistics provided us by the National League and look at Sammy Sosa's line a 303 batting average in 154 games 625 at bats 129 runs 190 hits 64 homers 155 <laughs> driven in I mean it's unbelievable. Well that sign said it. we skipped school to see Sosa and the fans coming out probably close to 100,000 for a two game series and they got what they came for a Sosa home run. So Sammy has hit 64 off a roke who also gave up the 64th to Mark McGuire. So. Sammy with a 344 foot opposite field home run gives the Cubs a four run lead now Glenn Allen Hills at first with one man out in the Brewer bullpen starts to get busy. Gaetti hits a shot towards short Valentin double clutch throw to second one and just in time to get Hill. And what a good play by Valentin at shortstop. No chance to even think about two and it was very close at second base but Tom Hallion called him out and we'll watch it again into the hole with a double clutch still a strong enough arm to get it there in time. And that was a great effort by Valentin at shortstop. So Hill is retired Gaetti now at first and Mickey Morandini the batter he has a six game hitting streak on the line in today's ball game. we're in the fifth. The Cubs lead by four. Morandini high hopper over first down the right field line. Gaetti streaks around second. He'll go to third. Morandini with a base hit. He extends his hitting streak to seven games. And Scott Service another chance now. And you know Mickey who started today at 301 would love to wind up over 300 in this just a banner year a banner year that might for him culminate with a gold glove at second base and that is going to be it for Roque. He will depart here in the fifth inning trailing by at least four and maybe more. He goes four and two thirds innings. He surrenders five hits four runs so far. The runners first and third belong to him and now Al Reyes will come on to face Scott service in a four nothing Cub lead in Milwaukee. You're always in here nursing your injuries. I have never seen such a group of cream pops in my life. This is football. I need guys that can play. Oh, man, I thought he'd never leave. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Hot dog, anyone? <laughs> I'll take it. Feel like you're in heaven now. Get a cashback bonus award later. Hallelujah. Discover the feeling. It pays. Hey, look at that smile from Sammy Sosa. He looks as if the weight of the world's been lifted off of his shoulders. So many questions asking what's wrong with Sammy after he hit 63 in San Diego. Nothing's wrong with him that an opposite field home run wouldn't and didn't cure today. He's hit 64. And now Al Reyes comes on to try to put out this fire in the fifth inning. Now you look at some pretty impressive numbers. Five and one ERA 395 on for the 48th time. He pitched in the ball game last night. Pitched an inning and two thirds of perfect baseball fanning two and that was it. He was the fourth Brewer pitcher last night. Here he is again today. And he'll be looking in at Scott Service with runners at the corners. But there are two outs. And Cubs fans, time to get out of the cold and into the fun in sunny Arizona as your Chicago Cubs get into gear at spring training. Visit beautiful Mesa, Arizona, and watch the Cubs at their spring training home, Hohokam Park, with 12,000 great seats, including outfield lawn seating. For more information on spring training packages, Call 1 800 283 Mesa or visit www.cubspringtraining.com. 
Sosa on the left, Roque on the right. And Sammy won the battle. He's walked twice, he's homered once. And the runners at the corners belong to him as well in a four to nothing cup game. Scott Service is 0 for 2. And he'll bat against the right hander here, the pitch. Off speed, strike one. Reyes has a couple of wild pitches this year. And the Cubs would like to pile it on against the Brewers. You get a team out of contention down early and down by enough, and more times than not, it's a relatively easy day for your pitcher. The 0 1. Line drive into center field, base hit by service. That'll score Gaetti, and the Cubs have a 5 0 lead. Morandini stops at second, service drives home number 36. And the Cubs making a statement to New York that that weekend series at home against the Reds might have been an aberration. Well, it's certainly at this point forgotten as they came up here with the express purpose of winning two games and then move on to Houston. So Traxel hits for himself here. Runners first and second two away and he rolls that ball foul for strike one. Traxel has walked and scored and he's flied out to right. He's got a five run bulge and he'll face the lower third of the Milwaukee order in the fifth. Five runs on six Cub hits today. The 0 1 he is low. One ball, one strike. Well, one thing's for sure you know the Mets are watching this ball game, but you also know how well they have played the last couple of weeks of this season. That New York team and this Cub team both deserve big tips of the cap for what has been an incredible race. Tracks a looping liner over second. Vina can't get it. Morandini will score. It's six to nothing. Traxel drives home his eight. Service romps all the way to third and close the book on Roque. Six runs, five of them earned. This inside fastball results in a broken bat, but a run batted in as the Cubs have a huge lead here in the fifth. And the Cubs not done yet. Runners at the corners. And Lance Johnson who's hitting everything lately right on the button with a chance to add to that lead. And Sammy Sosa got the parade started by hitting that opposite field home run snapping an 0 for 21 slide. And he's going to get a couple more at bats and Stoney you know it's a big game when WGN sports superstar Dan Roan is at the ballpark. <laughs> he's calling home and said hey guys did you see the home run. Dan will be accompanying us to Houston for that big series against the Astros. Here's Johnson. And he looks outside. Rich King was up here as well. So WGN Sports well represented here in Milwaukee, and we look for the same down in Texas. The 1 0. Good off speed pitch. A count now even a ball and a strike. Traxel leads from first, service from third. The Brewer bullpen still busy. Reyes sets and fires. Swung on, hit high in the air into right center field. Marquise Grissom hauls it in and the inning is over. The Cubs scored three times on four hits. The big crowd came to see Sammy swap one and he complied with number 64. Halfway home it's the Cubs by five. With day scheduled down to the minute, no one has time to wait for prescription refills. But with Walgreens' new 24-hour touchstone pre-fill system, your refills are pre-filled. Just dial the number on your prescription bottle, set your pickup time, and keep your day right on schedule. Your prescription will be ready at 6.45. Refills that are ready when you are, only at Walgreens. That looks tasty. 
It's a big king. I got this one for free. Gonna eat them both? Not if you let me play baseball. Baseball? Son, I coach. What position? Shortstop. No, no, second base. And I want a bat, too. Welcome aboard, slugger. The Flame Broil Big King. It's like a Big Mac, but tastes better with 75% more beef. Buy one now, say it just tastes better and get a second one free. How'd you boys like to play ice hockey? If you ask us, it just tastes better. <laughs> 1-800-CONTACTS. Exact same contact lenses delivered to your door for less than you're paying now. Call 1-800-CONTACTS. Save the trip, save the money. Hi, I'm Linda Carter, and I'm here to tell you why ordering your contact lenses direct from Lens Express is such a great idea. We're America's largest contact lens replacement service. Call now for a free catalog and save up to 50% by ordering direct from Lens Express. And I get the exact lenses my doctor prescribed or my money back. Now that's what I call service. I couldn't do without Lens Express. Call this number now for a free Lens Express catalog. Nothing comes easy when you follow your heart. This is fate. This is a challenge. Felicity. Premiering Tuesday night at 8 on WGN. After the Cubs half of the fifth it's a six run lead six to nothing and here come the Brewers the lower portion of their order Steve Traxel in front of these Cub cheeseheads in 98 have seen Sammy Sosa hit his 64th home run of the year and things going the Cubs way today again the Mets play tonight against Montreal at Shea Stadium then it'll be a three game showdown and Sammy will be up again in the sixth. And most likely again in the ninth. Two more at bats today. You would think the way the Cubs are swinging the bats. And partner, I hope your your gizmo is in good order for that flight down to Houston, because there'll be a lot of folks <laughs> checking their beepers to see what's going on with New York and Montreal tonight. Valentin, the shortstop, leads it off. He grounded out to first. Back in the second inning. Traxel has a gigantic six run lead, and that should be caught in shallow left. Who wants it? Jose Hernandez, the shortstop, calls Hill off. And two pitches, one out. Five in a row, retired by Traxel, who's gunning for his 15th win of the year. Bobby Hughes, the catcher, will stand in now. He grounded out to second his first time up. The Cubs have scored six times on seven hits. And they have taken advantage of just about every break the Brewers have given them in this short two game series. That's what good teams are supposed to do. Indeed it is and that's what they've done. Bobby Hughes looks in and looks at a ball one ball no strikes. Well this Milwaukee team really misses John Jaha. And his power, he's out for the year. He's got a sprained foot. He won the Clemente Award for the Milwaukee team, their good guy award. Was not here to receive the honor. And they've got a decision to make about what he will do for the Milwaukee Ball Club, if anything, in 1999. Well, it was a very disappointing year this year. He hit just 208. And you can tell he was feeling the effects of that injury. Two balls, no strikes. That ball sky down the right side and into the seats. It's kind of funny how things work, and of course, hindsight's always 20-20 in a situation like this. But Nilsson and Jaha were making a combined seven million dollars a year. The Brewers traded away Greg Vaughn because he was making five million. Had Milwaukee kept Vaughn, and had he had the kind of year he had for the Padres, you wonder how much better Milwaukee would have been for a lot less money. It's funny how things work out. The two on is popped up on the infield. Easy play for Mark Grace. He's under it. And there are two outs. Boy, Traxel just saying, here it is, boys. Hit it if you can. What he's doing today, unlike some of his other starts, he's throwing that high fastball by design. When he gets ahead of the hitters, he's throwing some face high fastballs. They can't do anything with it except pop it straight up. And I would assume we're going to see a pinch hitter. Reyes is scheduled but he will be lifted he went a third of an inning gave up two hits no runs no walks or strikeouts OK walked six for Milwaukee a season high and we're still waiting to see who the new pinch hitter for Milwaukee will be 
We know Kevin Tap <coughs> Tapney on Friday, and it could very well be Mark Clark on Saturday. We're back at it Friday evening from Houston. Seven o'clock our airtime. Kevin Tapney against Jose Lima. Tapney once again will try to win number 20. And we're still waiting for an announcement out of the Brewer dugout as to who the pinch hitter will be. Well, they have 500 people down there with the expanded rosters. Just pick one of them, Phil. Marcus Jensen will be the man. The young man came up with the San Francisco Giants with a lot of promise as a switch hitting catcher, but he's made the round since then. And I saw Jim Lefevre working with him in batting practice before the ball game yesterday. And he thinks that. Jensen has a chance to be pretty good especially from the left side where he has a whole lot more power than he does from the right side. So Traxel will take a couple of extra warm up tosses as the Brewers took their sweet time naming Jensen to pinch hit but he'll stride to the plate with two outs and the base is empty. It's all Cubs six nothing here in the fifth. So Jensen ready to go. So is Traxel, who's mowed down six men in a row. Traxel kicks and fires and misses with the ball. Well, our thanks as always to our great WGN crew today at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Our producers, John Walgren, Mark Brady, the commander, Pete Toma, Arnie Harris, of course. Great pictures and sounds from this two game set in Brew City and more fun we hope to follow down in the dome. Bob Forwald is here. So you do know it is a big big ball game the 2 0. That caught the edge two balls and a strike. Two and two. Well, he's had every pitch at his disposal today, hasn't he? Well, Forkwell's been terrific, and he's controlled the outside corner to both the left and right hand hitters. And Steve Traxel has everything going for him, including those six runs up on the board. Two balls, two strikes to Marcus Jensen. And he just did get a piece. Crowd quieted, but they'll roar when Sammy comes a calling in the Cubs sixth. Six to nothing Cub lead. Steve Traxel trying to win number 15. The 2 2. Full count now, three balls, two strikes with Fernando Vina, the second baseman, waiting to hit next. Right here, you just have to throw it down the middle. You have a six run lead. If he hits it, he hits it. Going to be an inside fastball. Let's see if he can get around on it. He couldn't. It hit service right in the mitt. Jensen strikes out. Scott will throw him out at first. And the inning is over. Traxel is retired seven in a row. He struck out five and after five. Cubs lead it by six. Got an old buddy waiting for a visit in Washington? With everyday low fares on Southwest Airlines, flying to BWI is your best route to the capital. You are now free to move about the country. I think the most important feeding is the one that you start in the fall, so your lawn starts to look healthier in the spring, and consequently, you need Scott's Winterizer. When I put down Winterizer in the fall, it allows us to develop a good, strong root base, and it allows the uh, lawn to endure the winter weather, and you get a real early greening. This grass is beautiful, thick, deep green. People will stop by and say, how'd you do that? Scott's Winterizer gives the grass a kickstart in the fall and makes it really look great in the spring. Pain keeping you awake? Now the effervescent power of new Alka-Seltzer PM gives you complete relief. Alka-Seltzer Speed plus a gentle sleep aid. The 100% solution to nighttime pain. 
New Alka-Seltzer PM. Sleep well. Want to color your gray beard or mustache and look natural? Get Just For Men Gel. You look so natural, no one can tell. With Just For Men Gel. Brush in and in five minutes, gray is gone. No one can tell. With Just For Men Gel. This copyright telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private and non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is strictly prohibited. Six nothing after five, and a new pitcher for Milwaukee, right-hander Rod Henderson. Henderson worked the majority of this year at Triple A Louisville. And he threw the ball very well, 11 and 5 in 22 appearances, 19 starts. He had a 2.97 ERA. He gets the ball over the plate. And he did pick up two innings on Sunday. But he did give up a home run to Ron Gant. And Sammy for MVP, I don't think there's any doubt about it. And it was echoed earlier, if you didn't hear the beginning of the broadcast, by none other than Tony La Russa, who had a great view of Mark McGuire all year long. But he said, for his vote, it would be Sammy for the MVP. And we certainly wholeheartedly agree with him. Here's Jose. He walked with the bases loaded back in the second inning and drove home his 75th run of the year. He's 0 for 2. With that walk in RBI, however, and the Cubs enjoying a 6-0 lead. Ball two misses inside. Big Cubs fan Debbie Swenson from Madison, Wisconsin is here. Cheering on the Cubs at County Stadium. Bouncing ball up the middle. Oh, what a play, Valentin. He'll skip the throw at first, and Loretta, what a snag over at the first base bag for out number one. Off balance throw by Valentin, and Mark Loretta, a jack of all trades, saves him an air. Good pickup by Loretta. And they retire Jose for the third time and your first baseman's your best friend when you make throws like that. Big Cub fan Rita Kelly 78 years young watching the Cubs in Tinley Park today and another huge Cub fan Sarah Davis the ever present Sarah Davis in the hotel cheering on the Cubs and hoping that they can win and it appears that they're going to do just that. It's six to nothing. And Grace takes a ball. Jack and Evelyn Egan of Sterling, Illinois, celebrating their 56th wedding anniversary today. It's also Evelyn's 77th birthday. Wow, how about that? Two big milestones. Happy anniversary and happy birthday. Jack and Evelyn Egan. Two balls, one strike to Grace. Swung on, hit high in the air toward left. Jenkins charges in, puts it away, and there's out number two. Sammy Sosa homer last time up. Here's another look at number 64. Sammy finally goes to right field and finds that you can hit it 344 feet, and it still counts. As that one lost in the crowd, number 64, and could 65 be far behind? Well, you've always seen Sammy hit his home runs in bunches. You've seen him go to right field more, I would guess, this year than at any other time in his pro career with the Cubs. More to right field this year than maybe his whole career with the Cubs. And that's what set up the fact that he's hit over 300 all season long. You know he wants to wind up over 300 because he has shed the tag as just a pure slugger. And he has acquired the tag as most likely the MVP. Breaking ball for a strike from the big right hander. It's on one. 64 and 155 for slamming Sammy Sosa. The 0 1. Breaking ball had a home run cut. It's 0 2. I want to check his spine, man. He's really had a vicious cut at that ball. And he does a little back bend out of the batter's box to collect himself down two strikes. We saw Barry Bonds leave the ball game last night after taking a pitch. And his back stiffened up on him. As the Giants stayed in the race, just two and a half back and two back in the loss column. Oh, and two. Another off speed pitch sails outside. The other big story the Texas Rangers. Well, they're playing great at the right time. Texas. 
With a two game lead now over Anaheim and Rick Helling picked up his 20th win for the Rangers last night. And also a big story acquiring Todd Stottlemyre. He's thrown the ball very well and he won a huge game for them against the Angels. One two is rolled foul. Sammy checks the bat thought for a moment he might have broken it. But no problem there. One and two. Well he tried to sneak a high fastball by him. You got to believe that he's going to go back to the curveball. At least I would think so. One ball, two strikes. Sammy digs in. Here it comes. Oh, I just missed. Oh, man. It's two and two. Unbelievable. Staggering numbers. The 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball had a good rip. Boy, he keeps going to the well with that curveball. Sammy's going to get a fat one and he's going to rip it someplace. Every day has been a bright, sunshiny day for Sammy Sosa here in 98. A year that we may never see the likes of again. The 2 2. Swan Belton, line drive, center field. Grissom back. Sammy just exploded that one into straightaway center field and you knew as soon as he started hitting the right that that stroke would come back to him and all Marquise Grissom could do was look up that was a line drive rocket and he's tied big man wow what a bomb 156 and 65 for Sammy Sosa. Chip, that's 11 multi homer games for Sammy Sosa. It ties a major league record. And don't turn it off, folks. He's going to hit one more time today. I'm just speechless. For a guy that looked like he couldn't hit. Water if he fell out of a boat for a while. He has gotten red hot in two successive at bats. Glenn Allen Hill was robbed by Cirillo, who's trying to win a gold glove. Glenn Allen can't believe that. And folks, I can't believe what I just saw Sammy Sosa do. He's hit his second home run in as many at bats. He's tied Mark McGuire with number 65. And the Cubs are routing Milwaukee at County Stadium. Refrigerator actually keeps food fresh. This might be a good time to talk about the Michelin X1. Thanks to Michelin technology, it gives you long mileage and better wet braking than any rain tire. And that should make everyone on a wet road happy. Michelin. Celebrating 100 years of innovation. Uh oh, here comes the skipper. Looks like there's going to be some fireworks now. What are you doing tonight? Helen and I don't have any plans. Great, Sparky and his wife are coming to my house for dinner. Would you like to join us? That'd be great. Great, if I can beat the traffic, I'll pick up some Bud Light. Bud Light. 
Get out of here! After you and the wife, get out! For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You have a beautiful home here! Well, thank you very much! Well, after this game, Sammy's going to say, Arnie Harris, I couldn't have done it without you. 11 multi-homer games. He's hit his 65th of the year. <laughs> that, that ball got out so quickly that Grissom was able to take a step and a half back, and that was it. It was in the center field seats. And that's 402 to straightaway center. That Vina. was a bomb. Vina breaks his bat, bounces to Morandini. One pitch, one out. That's one of those shots that we're grandpa here in Goodness knows I wish he were. He would have gotten it. Yeah, you he would get have the, gotten to the might be at all. You get the it could be first, and that would have been it. Wow. Unbelievable. Seven to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Sosa has homered in successive at bats. He has tied Mark McGuire with 65 on the year. Well, Henderson missed with a curveball. Then Sammy spoiled a fastball, and then he got a fastball out over the plate, and he didn't miss it. Mark Loretta looks at a strike. Oh, and by the way, it's seven to nothing. Steve Trexel has a two hitter oh. as an aside <laughs> yeah, to the Sammy Sosa show this year. Well, so many individual accomplishments have been overshadowed by Sosa. Morandini should win a gold glove. Kevin Tappany's got a shot to win 20. Kerry Wood, most likely the rookie of the year, even though he will have missed probably a month of this season. But more important for the win here today the Cubs will have a half game lead in the wild card trying to get a ticket to the dance. And if you wonder what's going on with Big Mac well the Cardinals play tonight. Randy Johnson and the Astros will face the Cardinals. I hopper to short on the 0 2 pitch to Loretta. He's taken care of without any trouble. It'll be Randy Johnson going for his 10th National League win. Against Darren Oliver and the Astros will try to win their 100th game for the first time in franchise history. How about this? Milwaukee's County Stadium has seen two number 65s in a week. Yeah, but Samuels was hit a lot harder than that one. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, they said in St. Louis when Mark McGuire made that magic. As Cirillo stands in, wouldn't it be something if they finished the year tied? I mean, there's a certain amount of poetic justice if that were the case. I'd love to see Sammy get the record all by himself. Don't make any bones about it, but no matter who ends up with more home runs, they both have won the hearts, the minds, and the imaginations of the American sporting public with unbelievable years. You know, Porter yesterday asked me, how long do you think this particular record will stand? And I said, uh, I guess it really all depends on if it's going to be as hot next year, will the ball be as lively next year? A fly ball into, say. into center. Well, let's put it this way. If it lasts 37 years, again, I'll be 70 <laughs> when the record is tied or broken. That is terrifying. Brewers go out in order one, two, three in the sixth. Amazingly, Cubs enjoying a 7 0 lead. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Pepsi. Generation Next. It took some pretty big strawberries to make better tasting strawberry pop tarts. But now they're improved with the best strawberry taste ever. I think the most important feeding is the one that you start in the fall so your lawn starts to look healthier in the spring. And consequently, you need Scott's winterizer. When I put down winterizer in the fall, it allows us to develop a good.